This webinar was recorded on September 26, 2024. The content presented in this webinar is for informational and educational purposes only. It should not be construed as financial advice. Hello and welcome to today's session on NHS pensions and what to do with the brown envelope. My name is Graham Crossley. I'm director at Medifin Tech. I'm going to be joined uh, this evening by Katie Collin, who's a partner at uh, Ramsey Brown, who are specialist uh, medical accountants. Uh, so, uh, for those of you who don't know who we are at Medifin Tech, we are NHS pension specialists uh, with an excellent reputation and unrivaled technical knowledge when it comes to NHS pensions. We support hundreds of accountants and financial advisors uh, who work in the healthcare sector, as well as supporting members directly. We've helped thousands of healthcare workers understand their NHS pension and taxation. And along the way, we have saved millions of pounds identifying and correcting annual allowance tax charges and errors on members' pension records. Um, we are very, very proud of our five-star trust pilot rating that we built up over the five years. And um, <clears throat> If you do need support with your NHS pension, we do have uh, a pension support service where we can analyse your NHS pension record for errors, project your pension benefits to your chosen date of retirement, and we can work through any flexible scenarios such as backdated pay awards, salary sacrifice, reducing hours, taking on extra responsibilities. And in addition to that, there is individual support with a one-to-one -one online call with one of our NHS pension specialists. So if you would like to use that service, then please scan the QR code or visit medifintech.co.uk forward slash register. So today's session, we're going to be talking about um, what you need to do with that brown envelope when you get it from NHS pensions. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about annual allowance because it's very relevant to the contents of that letter and then the McLeod remedy and also how you're going to process this tax reassessment as a result of the McLeod remedy. Now, it will be complex. There'll be a lot of things that we'll be covering. However, we are recording this and we are also uploading it to our YouTube channel. So please do feel free to revisit this at your leisure um, online. As we do go through the session, if you do have any questions, then please do pop them into the Q&A box and we will see how many we can answer at the end of the session. I'd like to thank everybody who took part in the registration poll, um, as it gives me a good indication of our audience today. So we had 58.9% who had had an annual allowance charge since 2015-16, and we also had 23% of um, the, those who registered who've opted out at some point between October 14 and 2022. So this will be important and it will become apparent as we go through. So what is the brown envelope? Well, these are the annual allowance pension saving statements that you receive. Now, they're typically sent if your pension growth is more than the annual allowance um, or if you have any practitioner membership. So if you're a GP or a dentist at all. Now, for some people, you actually have to request these manually, particularly if you're subject to annual allowance taper. So for very high earners. Now, we're expecting the 23-24 annual allowance statement by the 6th of October and this new one, the revised pension savings statement, which will cover all of the tax years between 2015-16 and 2022-23. And this is also due by the 6th of October 2024. So any day now. Now, when you receive this, please do not bury your head in the sand. Please don't just throw this in the bin because this one is an important one. You could be entitled to a tax refund for those tax charges that you've paid since 2015-16. So it's very important that you actually action this uh, uh, remedial, uh, the, the revised pension saving statement. So let's tackle annual allowance and what this means. So this is the limit to the total amount of contributions that can be paid to a defined contribution pension scheme, like personal pensions or SIPs, and the total amount of benefits you can build up in a defined benefit pension scheme like your NHS pension each year for tax relief purposes. Now this applies across all pension schemes that you belong to and includes all of the contributions that you or your employer pay. 
So let's say, for example, you have private practice and you set up an employer pension scheme and you put money directly from the limited company into that pension. It includes those types of contributions as well. Now, if you do exceed the annual allowance in any one year, you can offset any unused allowances from the previous three tax years under a process that's called carry forward. But if you're still left with an excess, well, it's charged at your marginal rate of tax. Now, originally, this was set quite high so that you had an allowance going up to £255,000 in 2010-11. But then it was seen as a very easy target to raise additional revenue. And we saw the limit go down to 50, then to 40, then the introduction of certain mechanisms that could reduce it further still to 10 and to 4. Recently, in the spring 23 budget, we saw that allowance go up to 60,000 but you could, in some circumstances, have it reduced down to £10,000. Now, in order to calculate annual allowance, it's not anything to do with your NHS pension contributions. It's all about the growth in your NHS pension benefits over the tax year, with something called your pension input amount. Now, to work this out, we have to work out the value of benefits at the end of the tax year, your closing value, which is your pension benefits that you've accrued, multiply that by 16 and then add the lump sum. Now, we take away from that the value of your benefits at the start of the tax year, your opening value. Again, we take the pension, multiply that by 16 and add the lump sum entitlement that you have built up. But there's also an allowance for inflation. So we increase it by the consumer price index from the September before the tax year started. And that closing value minus the opening value, that's your pension input amount or pension growth. And that's what you see on these annual allowance pension savings statements. So that closing value is your pension multiplied by 16 and add the lump sum. That growth value is that closing value minus the opening value. And they give you the pension growth from the previous three years for carry forward purposes. So if you have any unused allowances, you can use those. But be warned, whilst carry forward allows you to use the last three years um, unused allowances, those three years are impacted by the three before them. So you tend to have to go back a little bit further. So when we're looking at these reassessments, you need to go all the way back to 2010 and 11. Um, now, there's another document that has been recently updated um, where you can actually access all of this information in one place. So this is the annual allowance and service and pay extract spreadsheet. So this is available in England and Wales via NHS BSA. So you can contact them on the 0300 330 1346 number or email them using the email address on your screens. I would urge you to get this at least once in your career. Um, as at today, these are offline as they're being updated with this new McLeod data. But when you do have access to them, it shows you those growth values, the opening values and closing values. That Again, that pension times 16 plus lump sum. It shows it for the 95 section, the 2008 section and also the 2015 scheme. But one of the other major reasons why it's important to look at this document once in your career is the service extract element. It has a record of all pension employment that you've had within the NHS. So it has the start date, the end date, the pensionable pay you received for that role. If you're on a less than full time contract, it also shows the number of hours or sessions that you had in that role and also what the standard amounts would have been and what your hourly or sessional rate was. I would urge you to compare your own recollection of your career against this to see if there's any gaps or if anything is wrong. Now, just to give you an idea, when we analyse these, we come across errors in about one in eight cases. So there, out there, there can be quite a few problems with these. If you do have missing service, it can significantly reduce your NHS pension benefits. So it is worth resolving and it is easy to do so. You just simply need to get the evidence to the pension scheme administrator and they will then process the necessary changes. Um, if you have left service in another nation, then again, that's something you should look into as well, because in Scotland, the NHS pension is administered by SPPA. In Northern Ireland, it's HSC. And in England and Wales, it's NHS BSA. And it doesn't automatically follow you when you move between the nations. You have to specifically transfer it.
Normally, there is a deadline of 12 months, but late inclination transfers are possible in some circumstances. And if this is you, then you really should look into this um, to make sure that you don't leave service behind in other nations. Now, we also see quite a few errors with regards to NHS pensions. We've saved well over £5 million now since we started in May 2019. Some of the biggest culprits um, are the best of three. So this is to do with members of the 95 section pension who are officers, so consultants, for example. Um, historically, your pension benefits uh, were calculated based on last year's pensionable pay. This was up until June 2020, instead of the best of the last three years, which is how it's meant to be calculated. As a result, um, you could have been charged for the same pension growth twice. Now, fortunately, as they have resolved that since June 2020, when they do this new reassessment of your annual allowance, we know that 2015-16 onwards should have this error automatically corrected. But if your pay went down and up again between 2010-11 and 14-15, you might still be subject to this error. The other big error that we come across is misallocated arrears. So this is where you receive pensionable pay that should have been in a historic tax year. Um, but unfortunately, as it's been included in this year, it creates this artificial spike in your pay, which artificially spikes your pension benefits for that year, which gives you a very real tax charge that you have to pay. Now, this can be resolved by allocating them to the correct pension scheme year. Um, so again, if, if you've um, ever had, for example, a late um, clinical license award, be it the old local or old national, those tended to be the biggest culprits. Um, and lastly, incorrect carry forward by people not using enough of the years looking backwards. And there's a QR code that you'll see at the top of your screen there. And um, if you want to know more about these types of errors, you can scan that QR code and it will take you to a thread that I put on Twitter that also includes some of the more niche errors that we come across, um, which may or may not apply to yourself. Um, so the McLeod remedy. And let's look back to where this all started. This was 2011 and we had the Hunt report that proposed reforms to public sector pensions. They were deemed to be too expensive. Um, members were living too long. They wanted to move away from these final salary pension schemes to these new career average revalued earning schemes and move that retirement age to state pension age. Now, they specifically mentioned in the Hutton report that special protections for members over a certain age should not be necessary. However, when these reform schemes were introduced, they included this transitional protection that allowed older members to stay in their legacy scheme. Now, not surprisingly, younger members were aggrieved, and so the judges took this to an employment tribunal under the name of McLeod. The firefighters did the same under Sargent, and it escalated through the courts until July 19, when government accepted that the age discrimination needs to be remedied. So who does this actually impact? So it's all members in service on or before the 31st of March 2012, all those who could have rejoined within five years of that date. So that's still going to be people who are currently active in the scheme, still working, still contributing to their NHS pension. It will also include people that might have left the NHS or might still be working, but they've opted out of their NHS pension, those deferred members. It also includes retired members, whether that be a standard retirement or an ill health retirement, or even those in receipt of a spouse or dependents pension. It also includes all of those people that had that full or transition uh, or tapered transitional protection that may not have even moved into the 2015 scheme um, originally. And there's been a lot of members. So there's over a million members in um, the NHS pension for England and Wales alone. Um, so what's going to be done to remove the discrimination? Well, first of all, the 2015 scheme itself is not discriminatory. It was this bit the transitional protection, the bit that allowed those closest to retirement age to stay in the 9508 scheme. That is being removed retrospectively. And in its place, members will be given a choice. Now your choice will apply to the remedy period, which is the seven years between April 15 and April 22. And your choice will apply retrospectively to the benefits that you built up during those seven years. So you will get to decide, do you want those benefits in the legacy scheme? So 
the 9508 scheme or would you prefer those benefits to be in the reform scheme, the 2015 scheme? Now, fortunately, you don't have to make that decision until you actually take your benefits, but there are some important events on the timeline that you need to know. So first of all, we've had McLeod Remedy Part 1. This was the bit that got rid of that transitional protection. So from the 1st of April 2022, all continuing pension accrual for new service is in the 2015 scheme for everybody, irrespective of age. Now, for those benefits that you built up in the old legacy scheme, as long as you stay an active member of the NHS pension, then you will retain a final salary link, which means that your pension benefits will continue to benefit from your, pe your, your pay as it increases throughout the rest of your career. For those who are GPs, you would also then benefit from dynamization, which is that mechanism that uplifts your earnings by CPI plus one and a half percent each and every year, as long as you stay in the scheme. And now we're starting to see McLeod Remedy Part 2 take effect. The first element of that was the rollback. So on the 1st of October last year, everybody was returned to the 9508 scheme for the remedy period, for those seven years worth of benefits from 2015 to 2022. There was no choice in this. This simply happened to those people who are included within the McLeod remedy. Now, as you are in a different pension scheme for those seven years, well, that means that will have consequences. The first thing is that there are features of the 2015 scheme that don't exist in the 9508 scheme. Things like early retirement reduction buyout or ERBO. If you had an ERBO contract, you will need to decide, do you want to have your money back? Do you want to convert it into some additional pension in the older schemes? Or do you want to leave it as is until you make your decision? And if you do choose the 2015 scheme, then you can use that ERBO contract. Now, the biggest change for a lot of members is annual allowance calculations. Because the pension schemes grow at different rates, it means your annual allowance calculations for each of those years will be different. So if you had an annual allowance charge, you will have to review your annual allowance for all of those years. And then finally, when you retire, that's when you get your choice. You can decide to leave those benefits that you accrued between April 15 and April 22. You could leave them in the legacy scheme, the 9508 scheme, where they were rolled back to, or you could decide, I want to move these into the 2015 scheme. Now, there's no one size fits all solution to this. It very much depends on your individual circumstances at the time that you take your pension benefits. We've already been looking at this for our clients who want to understand already, well, what benefits would I get if I take the legacy scheme? What benefits would I take if I take the reform scheme? And this is something that we can do as part of our projections for you if you're looking to uh, do some financial planning on this. Um, so how will that remedy period be assessed? Well, it all depends really on what type of member you are. So. If you joined the 2015 scheme before the 1st of April 2022 and you haven't taken any of your pension benefits by the time they did the rollback on the 1st of October 2023, well, your pension input amount will be based on the legacy scheme. And so your benefits will have to be reassessed and that's why they're sending out these new brown envelopes. If you had taken your pension benefits by the 1st of October 2023, you're going to get this immediate choice. Um, now, this immediate choice might not be as immediate as you would hope. Um, pension schemes are hoping to get to about 70% of members by the end of this year and to everybody by April of 2025. Although given the sheer number of people that they've got to get to, it wouldn't surprise me if that deadline slips. But you will get this choice. Do you want to keep, do you want those benefits in the legacy scheme or the reform scheme for those seven years? And your pension input amount will only change if you choose the legacy scheme for those seven years. Now, if you were a protected member and you didn't actually join the 2015 scheme until the 1st of April 2022, and again, haven't taken your pension benefits at the rollback date, well, there's no change to your pension input amount, no reassessment needed for the remedy period. If, however, you did take your pension benefits by the 1st of October 2023, again, you're going to get this immediate choice at some point in the near future, and your pension input amount will only change if you choose the 2015 scheme and 
the pension input amount is lower than it was under your legacy benefits. Now, those who are receiving brown envelopes now, they're going to be in this category of joined um, before the 1st of April 22 and not taking their benefits by 23. Now, some members may not need to reassess the remedy period at all, but they might need to assess the 22-23 tax year. Now, as far as retrospective taxation goes and this reassessment, normally you're only allowed to go back for four years. But under the McLeod rollback, if you have a decreased tax charge, the government will account for the whole of the remedy period. So if your charge reduces between 2015, 16 and 18, 19, you will get compensation for the amount that you overpaid. Um, if your amount reduces between 2019, 20 and 21, 22, well, you will get a refund. If you have an increased tax liability, well, HMRC are only going to collect for full four years previous. So you only need to pay underpaid charges from 2019-20 onwards. Now, we don't expect there to be that many within this category. It would typically be those who've got mental health officer status. So you get that double accrual after 20 calendar years. Um, it could be those who became consultants towards the end of the remedy period and also some GPs with certain service histories. Um, if you do have a new tax charge, however, you will be able to use scheme pays if you want to. And if you are eligible, you will also be able to use the 2019-20 annual allowance compensation scheme for new charges in England and Wales for 2019-20. And the good news is that this whole annual allowance assessment is not reassessed again when you make your choice. If you decide to make your choice to move your benefits into the 2015 scheme when you retire, you won't need to redo this exercise. So just to give you an idea of what the changes could look like for members, here's an example of a consultant and the 1995 as shown as those gold bars on the screen, that's the pension growth for 95 scheme. And when the 2015 scheme is introduced, you can see the pension growth in the purple bars. You still see growth in the old 95 um, section because of that final salary linking. And when you overlay the annual allowance, um, everything was fine until we saw the introduction of annual allowance taper, the annual allowance then reduced. And so this member was exposed to tax charges and over the total, remedy period, they had tax charges of just a little over £16,000. However, if we roll back that service and then reapply it as though it was only in the 95 section, you'll notice that the pension growth overall is a little bit lower. And if you then think about annual allowance taper, the impact on that is a little bit lower, giving more allowance. And so this number never breaches the annual allowance over the whole of the remedy period. So they will get compensation of £16,265. And we've modelled this for many members now, and in the main, a lot of people are likely to get money back, which is why I say, please don't bury your head in the sand. Please don't just chuck this in the bin thinking you don't have to do anything about it. You have to take action in order to get these rebates. Now, there's another important thing to do with McLeod, and that's called contingent decisions. Since the 2015 scheme was introduced, We've seen members opt out of the scheme. They've given up valuable added years contracts and they've hokey cokeyed. So this is where you lead the scheme, you rejoin, you lead the scheme again, you rejoin again, all to try and control that pension growth and trying to sort of minimise annual allowance tax charges. Government has said that you can have retrospective membership. You can reinstate some or all of your opted out pension membership between October 14 and April 2022. You would need to make the employee contributions that have to be paid retrospectively, either as a lump sum or under some sort of payment plan. We're still waiting for the details on this, um, but we saw earlier there's quite a few of you attending today that are impacted by this contingent decisions, and it is definitely worth looking into. Um, and it won't be as simple as all or nothing, because um, there are some ways where you can actually uh, contribute less and end up with more benefits than if you had contributed for the whole time that you were opted out. Um, now, with regards to actually processing the tax reassessment, HMRC have developed this new digital service um, called the Calculate Your Public Service Pension Adjustment, catchy title. Um, if you want to have a look, you can go to the URL that's on your screen or scan the QR code at the top. What this does is it enables you to calculate any repayments due for previously overpaid lifetime allowance or annual allowance tax charges 
and also to determine any new, reduced or additional um, annual allowance charges or lifetime allowance charges. It will also be the mechanism to submit those details to HMRC for review. Now, before you panic and think, how am I going to do all of this? One of the good things that has come out of this is the NHS cost claim back scheme. Um, if um, you have suffered a direct financial loss as a result of the discrimination, the scheme can compensate you for that loss. And in particular, Department of Health have actually highlighted that you can get up to £1,000, including VAN, for support if you need to do the full HMRC digital service. Now, not everyone who receives um, an RPSS will need to use the full um, HMRC digital service. So for, for those 40-odd um, percent that have never had an annual allowance tax charge, you might not need this support. You might be able to just simply go through um, a, a simplified version. Now, the information you're going to need are the RPSS, so that revised pension savings statement, which will include all of that revised pension growth information that's needed from 2015 to 2022. It will also have the preceding five years, so that's for your carry forward allowances, and it will also have the 22-23 pension growth fa factors on there as well. And you must wait before uh, to, to you've received this RPS as before you can actually use the digital service. You'll also need quite a bit of historical tax historic tax data, so taxable income, tax relief claimed, personal allowance, any tax charges that you've paid for annual allowance, and that source of payment, whether or not you paid it or you use scheme pays to settle the charge for you. Now, don't worry if you don't have all of this information. Um, there's been lots of talks with HMRC over the summer, and um, they've come up with a process where you can get um, a data extract. So I think this is about the fourth iteration now that I've had with them. Um, and others, of course, have also been involved in this process, working with HMRC to develop this um, extract. Um, but it will give you um, the majority of information that you will actually need from a tax perspective for those years. So um, this can be sent to you from the Public Service Pension Remedy Specialist team. Um, and once we start getting this, we'll show you how you can do this. Um, so as far as an overview of the digital service goes, there are some initial questions. And importantly, there's this triage, which is a, a set of questions that will then determine whether or not you need to use the full service. If you do need to use the full service, well, there's then a lot of information you're going to need to put in. So there are some general annual allowance questions, and then there are some in-depth annual allowance questions as well for each of the tax years of the remedy period, and also for 22-23. Um, if there's an impact on lifetime allowance, there's another set of questions, but that's a topic for another day. We're looking purely at annual allowance in, in this session here. But as I say, not everyone who receives an RPSS will need to complete the full service. So because of that, I want to go a bit more detail into those initial questions and the triage, because it might help you to actually understand this bit of the process yourself so that you don't need to get any support. Um, so I'm going to cover how the HMRC digital service is going to work for those initial questions and the triage. So when you first open up the digital service, it's going to ask, do you want to sign into the government gateway? Now, if you do sign to the government gateway, it means that you can save your progress and come back to it as well. If you don't sign in, then if you if you if your computer crashes, if you close the browser, well, all the data is lost. But you can continue if you don't have a gateway or if you want to just to sort of sign in and just check your numbers. Now, one of the first questions it's going to ask is, do you want to overwrite a previous submission? So it's unlikely to be needed initially, but our experience is that we tend to find errors on people's records, so um, it is going to be useful if you need to repeat this process at some point in the future after correcting those pension record errors. It will then ask you whether or not if you're affected by the public service pensions remedy. So remember early when we were talking about this only impacts those people who are in the scheme um, on the 31st of March 2012 and that you worked during that remedy period between 2015 and 2022. You only need to use this service if you're subject to the McLeod remedy. If you were in the NHS pension in 22-23, but not subject to the McLeod remedy, so let's say, for example, you started on the 1st of April 2012, well, you should have already had a 2022-23 pension saving statement if you were impacted by breaching annual allowance. Now, 
it will also ask you what tax charges you want to review. So for the purposes of today, we're just talking about the annual answer. You would just tick that one. And then you'll ask, be asked if you've received any of the following information. Now for annual allowance, that's that revised pension savings statement. So that's the, the, the letter that's going to be in those brown envelopes. You can't do this until you receive that. Once you've answered those questions, it then takes you into this triage process. So the first question is, are you a protected member of the public um, service pension scheme? So if you didn't originally join the 2015 scheme until the 1st of April 2022, you are a protected member. And um, it will then ask if you have paid an annual allowance tax charge during that remedy period. Now, cut to the short, if you do have an annual allowance tax charge for that, you're going to need to use the full service. Um, there's, no, there's no getting away from it. You're going to have to go through all of those annual allowance questions um, in order to sort of work out what your reassessment position is. Now, there's another question on here saying that is the amount of contributions you paid into the reform scheme more than the amount of contributions you would have paid into the legacy scheme during the remedy? This isn't likely to apply to many members. Um, the ones that spring to mind would be those 2015 scheme members of the practitioner scheme um, who are subject to that annualisation process. So you'll probably know who you are, um, but you can also check with the pension scheme to work out if you if you were subject to different contributions. Um, if you are, then there's another couple of sets of questions that will be asking you what your net income was, uh, uh, which you would need to answer. And again, that will then take you through that triage process. The next question they ask you is, have any of your pension input amounts for any of the tax years during the remedy period increased as a result of the remedy? Well, it's pretty obvious that the 9508 pension input amounts are all going to increase because you've been moved from the 2015 scheme back to the 9508 scheme. So those pensions are going to be more. That growth is going to be more. It's a poorly worded question. We fed back to HMRC and I'm hoping they're going to improve this because what it's really asking is about your combined pension input amounts. So has the amount from the 95 and the 2015 scheme, is, is that increased when you're just in the 9508 scheme? Um, and then there's a final, another question um, to ascertain if you need to sort of assess annual allowance taper for 22-23. So it's asking if your pay for 22-23, your net income was more than 190,000. There's another question which is regarding sort of accessing your defined contribution pension schemes like personal pensions or SIPs. So it's asking if you flexibly access this or if you've made any contributions. Now, if this is you, you will know that you have flexibly accessed a, a pension scheme. So it should be quite straightforward to answer those questions. But as you go through that process, just those few questions, if you don't need to complete the full service, you're going to receive this confirmation that says you're not, you don't, you're not impacted, um, which means you don't have to do the full service. You don't, you can just leave it there. You, there, are, there are no tax charges that need changing. If you do need to complete the full service, you're automatically going to proceed to the next questions in the process. But that's how the, the initial questions and the triage process is going to work. We're kind of hoping that quite a few members that get those um, um, brown envelopes will just need to do that and that will be it. Um, if, however, you um, do need to complete that full service, we can look at how you would then address those next questions because there's quite a lot. So you'll need to get um, through these general annual allowance questions and then extra questions for 16 um, for all the tax years from 2015, 16 to 22, 23. I'm not going to go through each one of the questions because there are lots. It extends to over 200 pages if you have to answer all of these questions and also have personal pensions. For each tax year, they want to know your scheme membership, revised pension input amounts, did you have a tax charge? Who paid the tax charge? What your taxable income was? Any relief at source pension contribution, any tax relief, adjusted income, gift aid, personal allowance, blind personal allowance. This is why it's such a good thing that they've introduced that cost claim back scheme so that you don't have to do this. You can get support for um, professionals to actually do this on your behalf. Once all of the data has been plugged into this, 
it will then come up with these calculation results that shows you the amount of compensation that you're entitled to for those early years. It will show you how much your increase in tax charges is going to be and also the decrease in tax charges for those years 2019, 20 onwards. Um, so it's going to calculate all of this information for you and then pass the information on to the scheme administrator to help process those changes as well for you. Now, there are some important deadlines to this. So if you have a new tax charge between the 6th of April 2019 and the 5th of April 2023, the deadline to complete the full digital service is the 31st of January 2025, if you hadn't started to take your pension by the 1st of October last year. So that's basically active and deferred members. So that's not a long time to actually complete this. Um, there are going to be people who haven't, who won't receive these RPSSs. So you will have three months to complete this on receipt of that um, pension saving statement. If you had retired, well, you get an extra two years. Your deadline is the 31st of January 2027. Um, what's crazy about this is people aren't going to know if they've got new charges until they actually complete the digital service. So I think the current deadline is a little unrealistic. Um, we've actually written to the Chancellor asking for an extension, and I'm hoping others in industry um, will be doing the same. Now, if you do have a new charge, you will be able to use scheme pays. Uh, there is this mandatory scheme pays, which basically means you get to share the liability with the scheme, so there are no late payment charges or anything like that. Now, the deadline for that is the 8th of July, 2025, if you're an active or deferred member. It's 2027 if you're a pensioner member. But if you miss that deadline, don't worry, you'll then be able to use the voluntary scheme pays mechanism, although that has potential to expose you to late payment charges, etc. Now, if you overpaid tax originally, um, but don't have any new charges, then you have a bit longer to get this all resolved. So the deadline is the 31st of January, 2029, if you hadn't started to take your pension by the 1st of October of 2023. If you had retired, then again, you get another two years. But again, it does seem a bit absurd because you're not going to know which camp you fall into unless you actually assess um, the, your, your, your tax position for those years. Now, we're going to be helping people um, to navigate this service. We've set up the MyNHSPensionClaim.com website whereby we're going to provide this um, McLeod Revenue support to help you recover potentially thousands of pounds in tax and we believe that this should be covered by the cost claim back scheme. So this is taking people through that full digital service, not the triage, the full digital service. Um, the registration has been open for quite some time now. We've got quite a few people already sort of signed up on sort of a, a first come first serve basis, uh, but you can still register. You can go to, you can either scan the QR code that's on your screen or go to the website there. And the support service is due to launch imminently. We had hoped to launch this in April because originally these RPSSs were meant to be sent out in April, um, but we've, we've only just had the latest version of the HMRC digital service and it might even change again. So uh, we're still waiting for some final confirmations before we launch, but it will be imminent and we will be getting um, that type of support. Uh, one of the things that we are doing for this, because we recognize the complexity and because there is a risk of error and making and a risk of not claiming the, the right amounts, we're actually pairing up with a specialist medical accountant, Ramsey Brown, um, and um, Katie is with me this evening, if I pop her on, uh, she can explain why the benefits of using a specialist medical accountant and how we're going to help. Good evening. Thanks, Graham. And uh, hi, everyone. So uh, thank you for having me. As Graham said, my name is Katie Collin. Um, I'm a partner at Ramsey Brown LLP. We're a firm of specialist medical um, accountants. So uh, obviously being an accountant, I have uh, some slides because it wouldn't be an accountant presentation if I didn't have a, a PowerPoint. <laughs> Uh, so my background, um, I focus a lot on pensions with our clients, uh, particularly. So I work very closely with Graham, Jack and team at, at Medifintech. Just to tell you a bit about us. So as I said, we're specialist medical accountants, which means we focus exclusively on healthcare professionals. So that's really what we do. We act for over 2000 medical professionals, uh, over 300 GP practices and 100 PCNs um, nationally. So we really have the technical expertise in this area. Uh, we're very client focused and we like to think that we're really leading on campaigning in terms of medical accounting. And we work very closely with Graham and Jack on that. 
some of the common issues that we see in, in this area particularly is around the issues around the lack of understanding on NHS pension growth. We often take on a lot of clients who haven't even declared any annual allowance charges at all um, and their accountants aren't aware of it. But particularly, as Graham was saying, there's a lack of understanding, I think, generally in the accounting sector of what's happening because this particularly is affecting um, people in the public sector. So unless you do something proactive about that brown envelope, then it may well get missed. Whereas we've been working very closely with MediFinTech, we're acutely aware of how the system works, what's going on, and are proactively encouraging our clients to um, make sure that they're educated and aware and supporting them in that. You'll also have noticed tonight that the calculations are extremely complex. Uh, the digital service is extremely complex. So really having someone who specialises in this area is beneficial, um, particularly around things like the scheme pays election, managing those processes as well. And one of the things that Graham and I have talked about a lot is having two different experts who have the techniques and the experience to be able to review the data because this is extremely complex so the fact that you've got two different professionals both reviewing the same thing helps re um, resolve that. So as I said we have a seamless integration with Betty Fintech uh, for a number of our clients you're probably used to that anyway in the pension review report that we do. Um, we're looking at a bespoke service per client so really as Graham alluded to every client is different has different situations and we're there to support you in that and provide an integrated service in what we do. So that's a bit about us. Um, we'll be there to support you the whole way through that service. Uh, as Graham says, we're really here to work together to give you that seamless service to support you with some of the technical issues um, around the annual allowance and the cloud. As I say, uh, MediFinTech has been around for five years and we are specialists on NHS pensions. But when it came to this, we thought the risk of getting this wrong is so significant which is why we're partnering up with a specialist medical accountant so you get that four eye check rather than you having to do it because well why why PIY when you couldn't have support to do this um again i expect the triage process many people can do that themselves and again review the recording on youtube um if this is you and that's that uh, uh, and you need to do that but um, I'd like to say thanks very much for, for, for listening. Thanks for coming. And Casey, thanks very much for joining me. <laughs> Thank evening. you for having me. <laughs> and um, um, this recording will be put up onto our YouTube channel. It'll take me a couple of days to get it all ready. But uh, if you do have any questions in the meantime, please just email admin at edifintech.co.uk. And if you do need support, then please do sign up to our service on my NHSpensionclaim.com. Uh, thanks very much for coming. Uh, goodbye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.